So basically, I'm going to give a, just a quick overview. So in, in terms of the services for Muscular Dystrophy Canada, we have determined that our, our reason for being is to improve the quality of life for those with neuromuscular disorders. So everything that we do in the services department relates back to that mission of improving the life of our families and, and, our, and our registered clients. In terms of our national services team, we have a national director of research programs and services, and we have regional directors of services in four regions of the province, and we also have community development coordinators as well. And under the regional directors of service, we have service office assistants, and then we have also service specialists. So that's the team that we have currently in, in, uh, across the country. So we fulfill our commitment, again, to improve the lives of our families and individuals with, with uh, neuromuscular disorders with five pillars of service. The five pillars of service are education, equipment, support, advocacy, and information. Under the education pillar, we are committed to providing current and practical information through educational activities, and we found through the services that we're providing in that, in, in that area that we've had tremendous success in improving the lives, and the results have been great uh, throughout the year. Whoops, too quick. So in terms of what do we do in education, we provide outreach, so we develop events. We organize events like chapter conferences, we do family retreats, we do things like Youth in Action here, and we do uh, national symposiums in, in Quebec. I know they're doing, an, uh, I think it's a bi biannual conference every three years. Every three years we offer a conference, which is, which is well attended. Um, we do lots of speaking engagements where we're invited to speak. We could be meeting with nursing students, we could be meeting with university students, we could be going to uh, high schools, middle schools, even elementary schools. So we're having a, a great opportunity to, uh, to do that and we, we really encourage um, our families to spread the word that we are available to do those, those speaking engagements. In terms of uh, public awareness, we have educational messages in, in relation to neuromuscular disorders and disability issues overall, and uh, September Awareness Month is an example of that. And then we also have information such as um, the resources that we have to educate individuals, groups, uh, healthcare professionals, and we send out information to schools, uh, hospitals, neuromuscular clinics, all kinds of things like that. So we, we send those things out regularly. So for instance, in terms of education, one of the differences that we're making, and in, in, in just an example of a success story, for young men living with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, we are re they're realizing an enhanced quality of life using mouthpiece ventilation as opposed to invasive tracheotomy. This is due to the educational efforts made by Muscular Dystrophy Canada service directors. That's just one example of the education we're doing and how it's transforming lives. The uh, next pillar is equipment, and um, lots of people have lots of questions about the equipment program. Um, it is limited, however, we are providing quality service and quality equipment across the country. It's designed to help our registered clients purchase equipment in order to function more fully. The equipment must be medically prescribed, and there are limitations on the equipment we're able to provide, and, and um, we'd like to be broader, but due to limited funds, we, we do have some limitations in that area. The programs are, are ma managed regionally, so there are some differences, and um, mostly because in each province, healthcare is managed through the provincial government, and the as you all are aware, there's differences in each province. Some provinces provide uh, cough assist machines, some provinces don't, so it, there are some regional variations in, in what we're able to provide based on some of the, the government services that are already in place. Uh, because of our partnership with our local firefighters, our volunteer fundraisers, our families, our individuals, we're able to reduce the burden on families because of the, the um, fundraising that, that's happening across the country. We're able to, to provide this equipment that does enhance the lives and enhances independence. <coughs> An example of some of the equipment, and uh, this is kind of a unique case, um, we were able to offer um, assistance for a 12-year-old Holly who can now roam the beach and find hidden treasures along with her brother and sister and thanks to the purchase of this new Landes all-terrain wheelchair. It's, it's a very unique piece of equipment, but it, it certainly has made an incredible difference for this uh, young family and the family were elated and um, it's made quite a difference in her quality of life to get on the beach and experience things that other young families and children are experiencing. 
In terms of support, our, our third pillar, um, we're here to help. And I guess we provide support in many, many ways with individual support and, and indirect support, which I'm going to talk a little bit about. Uh, we, we do our best to find solutions to the challenges. And, and if we can't find the solutions in-house, then we're certainly going to go uh, refer to other agencies and try to do our best to find the support that you, you can have or that you need that we're not maybe able to provide. Um, and again, we do feel that, you know, when we, we come to events like this, we feel like it is transformational and that it is making an incredible difference for, for our youth. In terms of direct support, um, we do provide direct support and advocacy for clients with neuromuscular disorders, their families and friends and, and chapters, and we do that through um, attending neuromuscular clinics and uh, phone calls, chapters, peer support, getting people connected one to one another and, and doing our best through phone and, and meetings at local fundraisers and doing what we can directly. But also indirectly, we, we do play a big role in meeting with neuromuscular clinics and, and other supportive agencies behind the scenes to, to do what we can to improve your experience maybe when you go to the neuromuscular clinic or maybe if there's an, um, a, a place that we're doing some work with to ensure that it's accessible to, so that we're providing that indirect support so that you have access to, to those that deliver other services and, and that um, we ensure that we refer other community agencies the resources that we have as well so that you have the best service possible no matter where you're at. Uh, examples of the support that we're providing are the neuromuscular clinics, um, the family retreats that are happening out west, Ex a youth in action is a, is a prime example, wonderful example. Uh, we're providing that individual support, referring to other agencies, um, providing support for educational bursaries for post-secondary education, ensuring people are getting to, connected to chapters and one another. And the list would continue to go on, but those are just a, a few short examples. So um, a success story for um, support, um, we were able to provide transportation and services for four brothers to travel several hours um, so that they could access a neuromuscular specialist. The, the specialist determined that the brothers did have um, an incorrect diagnosis and then they were given their proper diagnosis and are now are, are receiving proper course of treatment to slow the progression of Becker muscular dystrophy. So that's an example of how we're supporting our clients to get access to services that may not be in their community but but may be widespread. Advocacy is an important part of our mission, and um, I, I, there's a lot of work to be done in advocacy. I know Isaac talked a little bit ab about it this morning, but um, in terms of the, the types of advocacy that we're doing, we do systems advocacy, so we may be advocating with the federal, provincial, municipal governments to uh, change policies or improve policies. It could be with housing, it could be with equipment funding, it could be around accessibility issues, and um, a lot of that's done in collaboration with other advocacy organizations and um, and allied health agencies. So we're not doing it alone. We can't do it alone. So we, we certainly are doing some collaborative efforts. In terms of individual advocacy, we're doing... Um, we're helping with, it could be human rights issues, accessibility issues, access to equipment that we feel should be covered by the government and perhaps um, the government has refused to fund. We may get involved, we may write letters, we may attend uh, government meetings to ensure that people get access to, an individual gets access to what we feel is, is, um, is fair and just. It could even also be a, a, an issue at a school that they're having. We've gone in to meet with teachers and resource teachers about accessibility issues around the school or understanding the challenges of, of the disorder, some knowledge-based things like that. So um, it's, a, it's an important role. So Muscular Dystrophy Canada, as we've heard throughout the day, it, on almost every session, we talked about the importance of making noise and, and really advocating on your own behalf. And we really feel that that's where it begins, and, and we're here to support you in that. But it, it's really the responsibility of our families, and you know, when they have the capacity and the tools are given, to get involved in individual advocacy and, and self advocacy. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask that um, have they been given out? To, okay. Okay, we're, they're going to be going around with a new tool that we've just recently revamped and improved. It's called the Advocacy Toolkit from Muscular Dystrophy Canada. And this is a, is a wonderful document. I'm really proud of the results of the document. It's going to be very helpful for family members and, and youth themselves to take a peek at the document and, and give you some ideas on where to start. Because some people, they just naturally have those skills and they know they have contacts, their parents have the contacts, they know where to go, but advocacy is not easy. And, 
and it, and it is challenging and it's lengthy at times, but this is a wonderful document that's really going to help you show you the way. There's some sample letters in it and, and also it, it's a starting point and it, and it may not happen today. You may not be ready to get involved with self-advocacy today, but tuck it away and you'll have it as one of your tools in your toolbox and you'll know how to get started when, when the time is right for you. In the meantime, you have us to help you show you the way a little bit. So, very important piece. So, you may ask, you know, how, how can we get involved? Like, like, maybe you are at the point where you're ready to get involved with advocacy. There's all kinds of areas where we could get involved with your own individual advocacy. There's chapter events that are going on and, and chapter movements. I know that a lot of chapters are thinking about getting involved with, with advocacy. Um, there's regional office strategies, like maybe in the west they're working on something, maybe in the east they're working on something that, you know, we don't all have to reinvent, we can share. Um, there's provincial strategies that are happening with other agencies and mostly our offices get involved with that but certainly we want our families to be helping us lead the charge for you know good social policy and, and, uh, and good positive change. And there's also national strategies as well. I know there's going to be, a, uh, I think in, uh, in the near future, a, a strong focus on, on national strategies. So again, those that are on committees and the, on the boards of directors, we, you know, we'd love to have you get involved with, with our strategies once um, we come up with a good strong plan on how we're going to do that. So. Um, so just an example of a success story in, in, uh, in my region, one of our registered families, and I think you've heard about it this morning, and it'll probably ring a bell with a few people here who attended the, the family session earlier. Um, one of our families publicly advocated with their provincial government to, to have better access to ventilation equipment for those with respiratory issues. And after many meetings with government officials, elected politicians, public consultations, uh, you name it, he did it. There was an annual investment last year of $1 million to improve the ventilation program so uh, I won't uh, embarrass my my putty here but it can be done and I, and I heard another wonderful story last night well it wasn't a wonderful story it was a long difficult story with a wonderful outcome for another one of our families in the region that's been then working for um, attendant care so there's lots of good things happening. I think it's really important that we share with one another some of the advancements, some of the progress that we're doing, and, um, and that we continue on that path. And I think in, in that, we're going to be raising the profile of Muscular Dystrophy Canada, which is very important as well. In terms of information and resources, um, Muscular Dystrophy Canada National Office Services Lead works in collaboration with the regions and we um, and the um, scientific team to develop updated, improved information and resources such as our disorder specific sheets, our resource guides, our self-help manual, um, this is an example of that, um, in our brochure. So we're continually hoping and striving to improve our services in, in terms of our information and resources and um, some other examples of that would be our website, our, our brochures, uh, getting a good library of videos, and the newsletters that we're doing both regionally and nationally, electronically, and, and hard copy. So that would just be a quick example of that. So again, thanks to the support of thousands of individual volunteers, chapters, donors, firefighters, other caring folks, we're able to raise funds, re, uh, fund research, and give support, and, and all of these things are included in that with the funds that we raise.